So first I want to thank you for coming to my talk, and uh, thank you for coming to Aishi. This is my first Aishi, and uh, I'm really having a great time. And uh, I think it's really important that we get together like this regularly, because uh, I know I feel on our campus that we, uh, for what we do, uh, it's, it's like swimming upstream all the time. And uh, it's good to get together with people who are doing the same, fighting the same fight, I guess, so that uh, we get a little perspective, at least I, I've been enjoying that. So we're going to be talking about uh, campus farmers markets and specifically about uh, partnership models. So keep an eye out for that. I, I really thought about doing this talk about one specific partnership, which I'll hear about in a minute. But then as I put the presentation together, I realized that really that's all development uh, a farmers market is about, is about developing these partnerships. So um, my name is Michael Gulich. I'm director of sustainability at Purdue. Erin Nelson was supposed to be uh, presenting with me from Greater Life at Commerce. She wasn't able to make it. so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do it on my own. I have Tam Hoggett here, who's my assistant director, and has been uh, real involved with developing the market and running the market. So if you ask any difficult questions, I'm probably going to ask Tam. To do so. so a little bit about Purdue. We're a uh, land-grant college uh, established in 1869. Uh, pretty big, 40,000 students on campus, 15,000 faculty and staff, uh, almost 400 buildings. Uh, and we're part of the, the Big Ten Athletic Conference. We've, we've had a farmer's market on campus for uh, several years, and it started as a wellness initiative for physical, uh, physical facilities human resources. Uh, we had a Healthy Purdue initiative, and they thought this would be a way for people to have access to uh, fruits and vegetables and, and more fresh food. And so through uh, human resources, they developed, uh, they developed the market. And it was originally located in the Dowk Alumni Center parking lot. Um, and I'll show you where that is on our campus in a, in a minute. This picture makes it look uh, pretty sexy, but it's basically was in a, was in a parking lot. And, uh, and the market hours were three to six. So the idea was uh, you'd kind of stop on your way home. Um, and, and it was pretty successful for a couple of years. Uh, and then the, the fewer people came and fewer vendors came and fewer people came. And uh, the word I got, I inherited the market last fall. Uh, and the word I got was if we left it where it was, it was basically just going to die its, its own death. Um, so started thinking about what we could do about that. So just to give you uh, a sense, this is our campus. The, the orange and beige uh, buildings are uh, residence halls. So the residence halls are primarily on the west side of campus. Um, uh, this is State Street, which you'll understand why that's important in a minute. Our academic core is, is mostly up in here. So this is the Dow Alumni Center. Um, and, and that location made a lot of sense when, when the market was first developed because that's Free Hafer Hall uh, to the south of it, and that's where most of the human, uh, most of the physical facilities employees uh, work out of. <coughs> so it was a short walk for them. Uh, most of them drove, even though it was uh, a couple of blocks. And, and people drove from other places on campus, and since it was in a parking lot, they had great parking. But as I mentioned, we have uh, State Street running through campus, which it's two lanes in either direction. It's not high speed, but right now it's classified as a state highway. So it's not pedestrian friendly. So getting students to cross State Street is, uh, is a challenge. We do have some academic buildings down here. We have our uh, vet hospital and some of our bio and uh, human health uh, buildings. But for the academic core is predominantly uh, north of State Street. So um, sat down and said, what, what am I trying to do here? And basically articulated these goals, and, and they were part of a PowerPoint that I was delivering uh, to anybody who would listen at the end of last year. And so the goals were to increase foot traffic, increase uh, vendor participation, increase the customer base, and thereby uh, increase the success of the market. And the strategies that I came up with to achieve those goals were to relocate the market to a central location, uh, make the market a destination, and to provide access to green space and benches. And I, we have two other uh, farmers markets in our community. We're, we're on the uh, west side of the Wabash River, so we're West Lafayette. There's a West Lafayette market, and then on the uh, other side is Lafayette. They have a, a market as well. And our market was really perceived as a um, marginal. Uh, those were the two big markets, and ours could, if it could happen or not happen, it wouldn't really bother anybody. But uh, the West Lafayette market is in, a, is in a parking lot in the afternoon, very hot, no trees. It's in a park, but you're kind of far away from any amenities or green space. And then the, the Lafayette market is, is downtown on uh, Saturday, Saturday mornings. Um, 
And that's really nice, but it's an urban market. So there's, there's pedestrian amenities, but it's, it's not near any green space. And I really had this romantic notion of uh, trying to create this market for my family uh, so that we could go and I could take my kids and I could take a day off of work because our market's on Thursdays and put a blanket down and lay in the grass with them and let them run around and get lunch and cookies. And So I had this really um, personal uh, uh, romantic notion that I was passionate about creating and that really uh, drove me in the process uh, based on all the resistance I got, of, you know, how this was a horrible idea and it would never work and, and I'll, I'll tell you about some of, the, some of that resistance. So um, we decided to keep it on Thursdays. Uh, downtown is Saturday, <coughs> West Lafayette's Wednesday, and then we're Thursday. So I, I tried to ask them, move one of the other markets so that we're kind of <clears throat> more spaced out. And it would give the vendors who are farmers some time to prepare in the fields and pick for the markets. And basically I was told in no uncertain terms would either of the other markets change their day. We could do whatever we wanted, but they were not changing their days. So the, one of the critical decisions we made was to, uh, to do a lunch uh, hours. So we did 11 to 3, and the idea was to start serving prepared foods to get people on campus to come as a destination. And the location that we chose uh, is called uh, Centennial Mall. So that's Centennial <coughs> Mall, North Estate. Uh, it's a hardscape plaza, and, and one of the few, if not the only, hardscape plazas on our campus. So Memorial Mall is a turf, very nice turf plaza. Uh, Purdue Mall has a fountain in the middle and some raised turf areas. And then Stadium Mall is a uh, uh, has a, a concrete walkway down the middle that's wide enough for uh, fire truck access, but then it's turf turf on either side. So this is a, a hardscape plaza. Um, these were some of the slides from the presentation I was giving the end of last year that talk about this new location. Um, one of the first questions that everybody asks is, "Where is everybody going to park?" You know, and, and if you look at this is the density here and how many thousands, literally, of people are within, you know, a three to five minute walk. I, I didn't think that was an issue, but I came up with this slide just to make the point that you, you, we're within a five minute walk of three, you know, five, four, five, six story parking garages. This is our public parking garage at Grand Street and then uh, Northwestern and University, you have to have a, a, a university permit for. But I also worked with, uh, with the parking, uh, we partnered with the parking uh, group on campus, and this is mostly, in here and all around Memorial Mall is, is head in, parking primarily handicapped and university vehicle spaces. And they agreed uh, to allow us to take a dozen of them, take 12 of them out of service for the, for the market and sign them uh, as 20 minute parking. So that, that, that it, I don't think it's been an issue. Everybody walks to the market like I thought they would, but, but in terms of convincing everybody that this was an okay location, um, uh, I, I needed that, I need, really needed that. The location for Centennial Mall, I was thinking of another location that wouldn't have been as good, but I didn't, I, I, I almost thought it was too bold to suggest this, and I went to the campus master planner and asked him what he thought, and he said, this is where you have to do it. So once, once he uh, said that, I went to my boss, who's the um, executive VP on, on campus, and asked him what he thought, and he actually ran it all the way up to the president, and uh, uh, she didn't say yes, but she didn't say no, so we, we went ahead with the, with the location. <laughs> and then the public, could come in off of State Street and use those 12 uh, parking spaces if need be. And the benefits of the location are some of the things I've been talking about. Really high foot traffic, central to the academic core, near the Stewart Center. So Stewart Center, our, our, our union is here, and Stewart Center is kind of a, an extension of uh, the union, and that's where a lot of our conferences take place. So given that we were doing May to October, we have a lot of summer conferences, the idea was for conference attendees they could walk up, even if they bought a dessert, or even if they just sat in the benches and didn't purchase anything, if they were getting lunch at the conference, it would be an amenity for them. Near the short-term parking, hardscape for vehicular parking. We had a policy pass on campus uh, this past year that um, no vehicles or heavy equipment would be allowed on turf grass anymore. We have a lot of car shows on campus, student groups, and they were tearing up turf, uh, uh, and, 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 and grounds was getting stuck with the bill to fix it. So. Um, Centennial Mall is ideal for that. And then near green, green space and, and bench seating. And this was the, the partnership idea that I, I wanted to do this talk around. We partnered with, uh, with Greater Lafayette Commerce, and they're an extension of our uh, local Chamber of Commerce. They serve both Lafayette and West Lafayette, and they, um, they've been managing the downtown market, you know, which has existed since 1839 for, for not since that, but they've been managing it that long, but they've been managing it quite a while. So they were, they were, um, uh, they had experience managing farmers' markets. 